Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Noobster here, back with another Wonderlands build video. So, guys, what I got for y'all today is a, another Blight Caller build, but this one is a spell based build. Uh, as you can see, we're using Ambihextrus, so obviously, this is going to be also Spell Shot as our secondary class. And uh, before I start the video, if you guys do like this video and uh, like builds like these, please sub to the channel like the video, all that fun stuff. I would really appreciate it. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop right into the skill tree and uh, we'll show you what we're rocking with. All right, guys. So as you can see, we're not going into any capstone, but I have a couple different variations of the skill tree here. Uh, we'll talk about this one first and then we'll talk about the small adjustments you can make based on your preferences. Uh, but starting off with the blight collar. So we are going into wraith mail and virulence. Uh, or virulence. Um, basically, we're just trying to do this to get down the skill tree. Wraith Mail is a great survivability tree or skill, and it goes hand in hand with Flawless Edge. So it's something that I usually like to put uh, in any Blight Collar build, really. So that's what we're doing for now. Um, and then two in virulence just to go down the skill tree. We don't need Geist in the Shell, so this is a spell-based build, so we're not going to be using too many gun critical hits. And even if we do, the the little bog spirits aren't going to do much damage because our guns aren't going to be doing too much damage. So we're just leaving this all the way. It's not necessary. And um, yeah, so we just went two points into this so we can have the statuses uh, for a little bit longer duration. Next, we put 5 into 5 into Flawless Edge. Like I stated earlier, this is just going to increase our damage dealt when our ward is full. Uh, so the more full it is, the more damage we deal, and up to 30% when we have 5 out of 5. We also put 5 out of 5 in Active Decay. This is where we're, we can mix around the points a little bit, uh, but we do need a couple, I believe, to get further down in the skill tree. Um, I think right now you would be able to get into uh, Worse Curse, but we do want to go into Frostbite. So we do need to put a couple of points. I've just, I think just two is mandatory, um, but that is what it is. Next, we have Worse Curse. Uh, this is going to increase our spell damage by 9%, and we can stack this up by three times, so you can get 27% extra spell damage, which is honestly huge. And uh, yeah, this is, this is a, a big, big skill here. And we'll show you how we're getting all, all the sorts of damages, all the poison damage, the dark magic, and then even the frost damage, uh, which is the last thing for frostbite. So whenever we apply the frost status effect, now the melee damage doesn't really matter, but our critical hit chance is what we really care about here. And so um, we're going to get a bonus 12% for each stack. Uh, and then there's three stacks, so 36%, which is huge for our critical hit chance. Uh, and that's pretty much it in terms of the Blight Caller. Um, now, I don't like... So one thing I've noticed with the Blight Caller is these skills here. So basically the ones where we're applying a status effect. So the Dark Magic one, uh, the Frost Status one with Frostbite, Burnt Offering, Amped Up, and then even Toxicity. All these decay really, really quick, like extremely fast. And that is very annoying. Um, I think that's something they should adjust just because... I've had ticks like from our um, status effects, but that doesn't reproc this damage. So it, it's, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, but you have to do three unique hits. And then if you just stop for about a second or two, they kind of go away. So it's a little annoying. So I don't really care too much about going into burnt offering or toxicity, even though those are great skills and would help the build. I think there's things in the spell shot tree that help out. Um, a little bit more, but I've done a, a little bit of testing. It's not the worst thing in the world to do it if you do prefer this um, all the way to Spirit st Swarm even. But uh, for now, this is this is kind of the setup that I like and I think works well. Uh, you can get Worse Curse and Frostbite to activate based on just our guns and our uh, skills itself. But um, yeah, I mean, since we are focusing on poison damage, Toxicity would be nice, but unfortunately, we're not going to spec into it, even though it would increase our critical hit damage by uh, a decent bit anyway with that being said let's go and take a look at the spell shot tree so starting off spell sniper our spell critical hit chance is increased through the roof 84 percent is huge um two is coming from our uh, class mod itself so uh, that aside you still get uh, a bunch of extra critical hit chance even if you just have five out of five in here um, but a little bit of extra uh, spell critical hit chance is, is always a good thing Next, we have Magic Bullets, three out of three. Now, 
this is, in my opinion, it's a little interchangeable. I've seen a few Reddit threads where it's saying it doesn't scale with double knot, but I went ahead and put it just in case. Um, if you know for like certain that it doesn't, I would really highly recommend putting three into uh, this reload skill here, just so you don't waste these three points. But for now, this is what I have done, just in case if the damage is increased based on double knot. Next, we have Mage Armor and font of mana so font of mana extremely essential we're trying to get our spells fast and this is increasing our spell cooldown rate by 20 percent so a very nice skill to have mage armor now you can see we also put in a glass cannon so a little counterintuitive but the reason we do this is because of wraith mail and flawless edge actually mainly flawless edge um so that our damage dealt is increased whenever we have our ward full and this is going to give 10% extra word restoration whenever we get a stack of spell, spell weaving, whether that be through reloading or using a spell or anything like that. But yeah, so that's why I've put one point in here. Also, it helps us go down in the skill tree a little more. Next, we have one in Glass Cannon. This is just going to increase our spell damage by 30%. We really don't care that it stops our ward regeneration. It's perfectly fine because we do have Mage Armor and Wraith Mail to get our ward back. So, um, the, th the flat 30% extra spell damage is definitely a must-have for any spell build. Next, we have High Thread Count. This is going to increase our spell weaving stacks by 3. Very essential skill, and just overall helps us with our damage, too. Uh, next is Imbued Weapon. We only put 4 out of 5 points in here, um, and it was mainly to get down in the skill tree uh, to double knot here, and we put 3 out of 3 in here, and then we're getting 3 out of... Um, Three from our class mod itself. So three from Double Knot and then two from Spell Sniper. So that is the skill tree. Here is a quick look at our hero stats. We maxed out crit damage and spell cooldown and then put a little bit into critical chance. So that is all we did. Uh, we don't have any Blight Calder power, unfortunately, but we do have 99% extra spell shot power, which is really nice to have. All right, so now that we covered the skills themselves, let's go ahead and take a look at the inventory. So... Don't be worried about the fear knots. I know, I know. I, I'm a firm hater of uh, just pixies or any companions. Not that I really hate companions too much. I think pixies could obviously get a little overpowered. But this build does not do a tremendous amount of damage with the pixies. Um, and in fact, I even like using the guns with wings. They're both fine. If you prefer this, use the pixies. I just kind of throw whichever one. But anyway, let's first take a look at our goblin pickaxe. So we have a goblin pickaxe. This is mainly for our extra movement speed and spell cooldown whenever we pick up gold. Really, there was nothing else that I cared for. You could use a spell blade. I just think this is a little bit of extra passives and we don't have to worry about actually meleeing anything. Um, so I went ahead and got this. Um, the enchant on this is on spell cast, increase frost damage by 30% for f five seconds. Uh, with spell builds, you're very limited and uh, with enchants, so... I kind of had this just to increase our fear not damage because we have everything else for spell damage and things like that. Um, but yeah, like, so we went ahead and just got this enchant. It'll help out a little bit. So we thought, why not? Uh, with our fear knots, uh, and these are the only two weapons, you can use the crossblade, really not necessary. I just have a night chain in here too. Not necessary again, but yeah, we're just sticking with these two. Um, and they have the on spell cast increase elemental damage by 20% for five seconds. That's a great enchant to have. Uh, with our rings, we have spell damage rings with extra spell critical hit chance and spell critical hit damage. So both rings here. And I know the mood ring isn't, isn't the best thing to have here because we are going to have our ward full. Um, but unfortunately, this is kind of what I'm using. And I think it still works fine and it does a ton of damage. And you're still going to get hit. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities where your ward's not full. And this will compensate some of the damage that you're not getting from um, from the skill uh, Flawless Edge anyway. So I think it's kind of a, a win-win. Even if you don't have your shield, you have this bonus. If you do have your shield, then you have the, the bonus from the skill tree. Next is the Body Rune. We're still using the Body Rune. This has the enchant on spell cast, increased poison damage by 30% for 5 seconds. And uh, I know one thing that you may, if you if you are interested, you could do. Um, so whenever you kill an enemy with the body rune, uh, you get max, you get your health back. But on top of that, you also get bonus fire damage. 
So theoretically, you could go ahead and put three out of three in Burnt Offering. Now, you won't get a benefit from the gun damage side of things, uh, unless you're using the uh, Fear Not with the guns with wings. But again, that's not a big chunk of damage, so it really is not important. But you could get the bonus spell cooldown rate, which could be something that you prefer. I really don't think it's worth just because you have to get a kill. And uh, I think the spell cooldown rate is kind of important when you're bossing. Um, but if we're not going to get that bonus because we don't get to kill an enemy, some bosses have um, like other mobs that you could kill. But again, since it decays really fast, I don't think it's worth. But if you do like Burnt Offering and want extra spell cooldown, you could do that, um, but again, I, I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit about the uh, um, the other variation of this after I go through the inventory, but there is other way to get bonus um, spell cooldown rate and try to have them quicker, but anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's finish the gear. Um, next, we have a Corrupted Plate Mail. So this is a Spell Shot Power and Stabomancer Power. This has the passive Spell Critical Hit Chance, All Damage Dealt, and Spell Damage, so very, very good um class mod here and i also have another class mod here for you guys and that is give me a second to find it that is this one here which is another corrupted plate mail with the same passives that has spell shot power and blight color power and this actually gives plus three to uh worse curse and plus two to font of mana so you will get better action uh, or spell cooldown um so this could be something that you prefer to use over the um the one with you know spell shot power and stabomancer power because obviously stabomancer power isn't helping us um but i think the three and double knot is a big big help um but other otherwise if you prefer to use something else feel free to use that other class mod that's also going to be included in the save file and uh yeah you can have fun with that as well next we have a joint training so this is going to be uh poison damage and spell shot power and this has all damage dealt very nice now, I'm not certain about this, but the main reason I wanted the joint training is because of uh, companion critical hits increase Fate Maker critical hit damage. So that's kind of why I prefer using the Pixies and the Fear Knots. It's so we can potentially get this bonus. Now, I'm not 100% certain if this is actually going to to work per se but if it does then we do get a bonus chunk of damage but even if it doesn't we're still getting a lot of poison damage a lot of bonus spell shot power uh and even the extra passive all damage dealt which helps a ton all right and then last but not least we have our two spells on spell cast increase gun damage by 30 percent for 10 seconds and then on spell cast increase damage dealt by 15 percent for 10 seconds and both of these are wicked gossips and uh as you guys know that is the newest spell or one of the newest spells in the game and uh yeah they're actually very very good so one thing about these is now they do a bunch of damage if you directly hit the target but they do a lot more if you ricochet so if you kill a mob and then the bullet or the, the spell ricochets over to another enemy that second enemy is going to be dealt way way more damage and it, it's it's crazy i've one spelled or bosses because of because of that um little unique ability and so that is something that does help but even if you have to directly damage a boss let's say you don't have um you know you don't have mobs around you or anything like that just the boss then it still does the trick and now i will say this build is great for regular bosses and regular trash mobs but for the actual raid bosses it's not insanely good now, guys, one other thing I wanted to let you guys know about, and this was another big reason why we didn't go all the way into toxicity. If you guys prefer, now, I know in the previous builds I have included the triple ice spike, but let's say you wanted to use the triple ice spike. I am including those in the build as well. And so all you would have to do is switch out these spells for the triple ice spikes. I have a bunch of different variations. I know the ability damage one is kind of useless. It's from my old build, but... You can use these, and to, uh, along with that, I've also included another joint training, which I believe is right here, which is for frost damage. So all you would have to do is swap those things out, and you're good to go. So feel free to use those. Um, you're still going to activate all your spells. You're, now, now, in that case, active decay is pretty useless, so I would remove these points. I would go ahead and put it in virulence um, or just anything, really. I mean, 
if if it's ice, you might want to even go into bog down and just get a bunch of damage from from the soaked effect itself. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Now the little variation that I was referring to earlier. So this is the the setup I have for the wicked gossip. Now let's say you want it to get your spell back or yeah your spells back a little bit quicker. One thing I would do is take out these three points uh, in active decay, so it'll just be two out of five. Then go ahead and in the spell shock tree, max out Im imbued weapon. This is going to give a little bit of extra damage, and then go ahead and just put two points, or actually just one point into um, this reload skill here, and you want to put the last point into sever the thread, and then whenever you spam your gun with wings, I believe, because I think the gun with wings does regular gun damage, um, while the pixie does companion damage, or sorry, spell damage, so for that reason, I do think this is a gun critical hit chance, so, or gun critical hits, and then it gives you your spell cooldown, so I prefer to just use this because I think it works out better and I think I'll get my spells back quicker. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, please. I, I don't know too much about Fear Knots and things like that. I don't make a lot of builds on them. Um, but yeah, this is just my understanding from what I've done testing on. But yeah, when you do that and you use um, Sever the Thread, you will get your spells back a lot quicker. But you are going to give up a little bit of damage because of Active Decay gives bonus it, it's not much it's like 12 percent extra bonus poison damage with the three extra points again not necessary at all feel free to not use it uh in fact another big thing i was talking about is uh if you can even take one point if you're rocking with this setup take one point out of active decay go ahead and put it into restore the veal this is also going to be a great one just for survivability and making sure that you could keep procking flawless edge you could do that I didn't, I just wanted a little bit of extra damage from the Active Decay passive. So that's what I've done. I wanted to quickly show you guys that and show you the, show you the alternate route in case you guys were th wondering if there was any other way to get your spells back quicker. Still, the cooldown is not insane. So let me show you guys. If I do shoot out spells, I know I don't have any spell cooldown or anything, but you get them back relatively quick. So it's not a big worry, but if you do want a little bit of quicker spell casting then then that is the better option to go with anyway that is it for the skills and the inventory i'll give you a quick look into the myth rank itself so here is our arc mage here is our blade master here is our dead eye and then last but not least our druid we are just trying to max out the main skills here but unfortunately i have to go into one of these because they kind of force you to put a, a point into each of these before you can move on to the next one um, but yeah i'm trying to max out movement speed so unfortunately i do have to spend a few extra points um but i think in the end it would um this is something that everybody can work on and, and improve over time but once i get those maxed out i'm not going to try to increase any of the other bonuses like spell damage and um like melee damage statics and, and things like that but Yep, that is all for the build video. I will show you guys some gameplay at the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a sub, like the video, all that fun stuff. Comment down below, um, you know, any suggestions you have. And I will be posting this in my Discord, which is going to be linked in the description below, so feel free to join if you are not already there. And uh, if you are on console, feel free to message me directly on Discord, and I can hit you up with the gear itself. Uh, I, I love to help out everybody, so... So feel free to do that, and uh, yeah, guys. So guys, if you did enjoy the build, again, please leave a like. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, that is enough for me. I will show some gameplay now, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Peace out, guys.